go ahead and start recording this. All right. So, um, do you want to go first or? I don't I can... really care. I mean, we can maybe just bounce it back and forth and kind of. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, probably should do some introductions since I think this is supposed to be a podcast. Right. So, um, yeah, uh, I'll start out. My name's Lindsay Johnson. I am a PhD candidate in the School of Natural Resources studying climate assessment and impacts. And my story was uh, scientists say climate change is here and Nebraska's not immune. Awesome. I'm Celeste Kennedy. Uh, my major is geology and I'm going to be a senior in the fall. And I wrote this story on water in Nebraska and climate change. All right. So you wrote about water. Why were you drawn to that topic? I have been interested in water since I was in seventh grade. I did the Science Olympiad event, Awesome Aquifers, and I really just fell in love with it. Um, I decided that was what I wanted to do. So all throughout the rest of middle school and high school, I just kind of focused on that. And then, um, you know, I had that, I started as a water science and geology major and then just focused on geology. Awesome. So you wrote about the science. I did. So why were you drawn to that <laughs> besides being a PhD? Kind of, <laughs> kind of obvious, uh, being obviously getting my PhD in climate science. Um, I'm really interested in communicating climate science. I think that is an aspect that all scientists were not formally educated in how to talk to people that aren't scientists. Um, so this was kind of a way to push myself to talk about these very complicated issues in a way that can help people who don't know the science connect with it. So um, finding like personal stories of here's how the, f the 2019 flooding impacted them and this is why they care. They may not care about the climate, but they care about what's happening to their crops, to their cattle. So it was a major learning experience because scientists, we write as objectively as possible. So we put no emotion into it. It's very factual. So, but yeah, that's why I chose that story is to really challenge myself to learn how to talk to people about science. That's a really good point. I also really enjoy science communication and it is something that sometimes there's lots of scientists who don't know quite how to explain to the public what they're doing their research on. Yeah, and that's like one of the major problems. I think the disconnect between science and everyone else is, especially as you advance in science, you're taught to write a specific way for a very specific audience. So that's why this journalism project is so awesome because you learn how to write for people that people can understand, um, which is very different, as I said, uh, than scientific writing. So right. I um, thought it was it was very kind of difficult for me to get used to writing such short paragraphs because I'm used to writing <laughs> papers for my geology classes that you know it's. 13 sentences in a paragraph <laughs> instead of oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, hearing on my drafts, it's too sciencey. You know, how do I put some anecdote in and then put in some scientific information so it's not overwhelming? To me, data and numbers make a lot of sense, but you don't want to read a paragraph that's just listing statistics. Um, and that's really hard because that's, again, what we do as scientists is we put in numbers. Right. <laughs> but, um, so we talked about how it was difficult to switch to kind of more of the journalistic writing style. But besides that, what do you think was the most difficult part of this process? For me, the most difficult part was I'm more of an introvert. So just cold open emailing people asking like, will you talk to me about this was like definitely something that was outside my comfort zone. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to just email and ask someone to talk to me. Mm -hmm. 
but it ended up being such a good experience because everyone was really nice and did want to talk about it and it was fun. So um, I guess then what was your favorite part about all this? Um, I feel like my favorite part was getting to talk to the people. I'm really glad that the class kind of worked out the way it did because I would basically just finished interviewing most of the people I wanted to before the pandemic started and then we couldn't really go out and interview people in person anymore. Mm -hmm. So that worked out really well and it was just great to get to talk to people about something that I'm passionate about and they're passionate about and just hear their perspective on it. Yeah, I can agree and disagree with the interviews because for me, obviously talking to other people who are passionate about climate change is something I love doing, but then also talking to people who have, who are skeptical and who don't share my point of view. Um, I think we get so in the habit of only talking to people that share our points of view. And it was challenging. Um, like I remember a couple interviews, I had like butterflies in my stomach. Like I'm talking to somebody who says they're not sure. And how do you handle that? And you find out it's actually not that hard. You just listen to them and they actually, you can see their point of view. So talking to people, I think, is a good way to learn about a topic. Um, because I talk to some people that they're like, I don't really care. Just tell me what to do about it. Like, I don't care the causes. Just, you know, let's figure something out. And it was a point of view I hadn't thought of before. So right. very interesting. Was it kind of difficult for you to write a balanced story? Yes, um, because to me, like, I've wanted to be a climatologist since I was 15. And it's like, it makes so much sense. We have all this data, we have all this evidence. But I have to remember, not everyone eats, sleeps, and breathes climate change like I do. And to try and hear their point of view without just jumping and saying you're wrong um and that's a skill that we need to learn anyway because there's always two sides like people see things differently and you need to hear them out if you even want to have a chance at talking with them um but there were definitely a couple times when i had to take a deep breath and understand that they are totally entitled to their opinion while i disagree with it um you know, it's like, how, how would I feel if somebody just jumped in and said I was wrong? So, but yeah, it, it was hard, but it's good because as I get into, hopefully once I graduate and become a teacher, I'm going to encounter some of this stuff. So it's good practice. Yeah, definitely. But, um, what about designing the website? Because I know a lot of us had no website design experience. And then this summer we've had to work on our, both our stories and uh, fellow classmates stories. Right. I actually did a little bit of website design when I was in high school. I did um, National History Day and I always like designed a website for it. So I was actually really excited to kind of bring back some of those skills and get to do it again. But it was definitely different doing it for a journalism story oh yeah um yeah that I remember they're like here's wordpress and I had no clue um I just luckily when it comes to tech stuff I kind of can pick it up pretty fast but I spent like a day just figuring stuff out and once I figured out the basics obviously I am no expert but I love like making like organized design. I used to have a job at UCAR, which is a university uh, cooperation of atmospheric research. And I worked for a um, part called Comet Program. We made a lot of graphics for um, professional development for meteorologists. And so it kind of brought me back to that, that meticulousness, like, okay, which is the best way to show this, you know? And so I actually started enjoying that. I think the second story I put together, I sat down and I worked for like 10 straight hours because I was actually enjoying myself. So. Yeah, I definitely thought it was, it was fun because I do like that 
organization aspect and the making it look pretty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the hard part about writing this is I kept wanting to put pictures and kind of as in my like document, I wanted to see how it would look and they kept saying, take the pictures out. We don't need them right now. I'm like, but then how do you see what it's supposed to look like? Right. So, they add that like that necessary element to really yeah. convey the whole story. Yeah. So it, it was really fun at the end to kind of finally pull it all together and be like, yes, this is what I envisioned. Yeah. So um, what do you think is the biggest takeaway you've learned through the last six months of this process? Um, I would really say it's about not being afraid to reach out to people for mm -hmm. what you need and to be able to listen to them and just, you know, I feel like especially when you're a student, people are so understanding. They're like, yeah, we love students. We want to talk to you. So it's, you know, kind of relying on that and just yeah. putting yourself out there. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think we're often so scared of, or we're frightened of people disagreeing, of talking to people who are not in our circle, and also being shut down, I think. Um, because obviously in school, you're kind of encouraged to ask questions and think differently, but when you start going out to other people, you're not in that kind of safety realm. And, uh, but you learn so much by just talking to people. It's amazing. Yeah. Like I learned, like I never realized how distinct like Eastern and Western Nebraska are. Um, you know, you th like we often group farmers and ranchers together, but they're very distinct. Like they have different needs and different cares. Um, and then you have the urban areas and then the rural areas and you, you just forget to think about everyone and their point of view. You know, the people in Western Nebraska don't necessarily care what's going on in Lincoln, but then Lincoln doesn't, you know, I heard repeatedly the cities don't think about us. So it's really interesting just hearing different people's points of view. Um, and that's the only way we're going to move forward with any kind of change is we have to address needs of everyone. Yeah. So I thought it was so interesting when I was writing because I was kind of thinking about like, oh, you know, we have this aquifer. We want to make sure we're protecting it. We're not over pumping it. There's not going to be a loss of groundwater. But then I talked to other people and they're like, well, you know, here there's too much groundwater, you know, yeah. and I'd never really considered that as an issue. So it's, it's just great when you can talk to people and realize there's some more nuance to issues and then be able to take that and then write about it and present that to other people who might not have considered that too. Yeah, I know. I talked to some farmers and I kind of brought up, you know, renewable energy and their kind of feelings. So like, we're just trying to keep our head above water, you know, agriculture and ranching, especially the smaller um, farms and ranches, they barely make ends meet. Like, they can't think about all these big ideas we're thinking about because they are just trying to get by. And I never, like, I'm like, but this would make so much better or make things so much better. But when you're already struggling, you just need to keep going. And I think as, you know, climate scientist, I see these big ideas and they make total sense to me. And I don't know why everyone's not on board, but it's also not my money. You know, yeah. I'm not the one having to put money into these adaptations. And it really makes you think, how can we tackle climate change in a way that, first of all, doesn't put blame on farmers and ranchers, but also helps them um, if they want to adapt, but they may not have the capabilities. Um, yeah, coming from my scientific realm, I was very naive in the actual world of how people have to think about these problems because right. academia is very isolating. Yeah. So, but um, can you think about anything else that we want to discuss? Um, 
I feel like we kind of hit the main points of our last six months here. Yeah, it, it's been a crazy six months. I mean, we meet and then a pandemic hits <laughs> and then we all have to go home. And I haven't seen any of you in person since what, like April, March, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever spring break was, so. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting time. So, all right. Well, I will go ahead and 